1992, I was only 23, I was full of energy, Northern Exposure was my favorite show on TV, and I was looking for adventure. Hey there everyone, I'm Sean Vincent Biggins, and welcome to the sixth episode of my quarantine-induced web series, Old T-Shirt Tuesday. I suppose you could consider this episode to be a triple-double, to borrow a basketball term, because it involves three different t-shirts and two different trips to the Pacific Northwest. Aside from a school field trip to Washington, D.C. when I was in sixth grade, the only other time I'd been outside of the Northeast was on a trip to the U.K. that I took with my parents and my brother Tim when I was 17 years old in 1986. Now, if you're familiar with the show Northern Exposure, then you know that it takes place in Alaska. But Alaska is not the most practical place to shoot a TV show, and it's pretty far from Hollywood. So uh, the majority of the show was shot in Washington State. The amazing landscapes that were the backdrop for this show uh, just made me want to go there in person. I got my hands on a Washington State travel and tourism magazine and I started planning. There was no Google Maps back then, so I just had to use a good old-fashioned Rand McNally Road Atlas. Mom let me borrow her new 35mm Olympus point-and-shoot camera with a zoom lens on it. And when I landed at SeaTac Airport, it was about 10 p.m. local time, so it felt like 1 a.m. to me. The car rental company was out of cars when I arrived, uh, which was pretty aggravating. Another customer was late returning their car. A detail that I still remember um, was when I got in the car. The clock read 1111. So I just kind of stared at it for a moment and laughed a little bit. So I started driving. Uh, to my hotel, which was about 40 miles away, uh, north of Seattle in a town called Everett, Washington. I very vividly remember a particular moment um, as I was driving north. I was headed up this incline on I-5, and just as I was getting to the top of this hill, the gleaming city of Seattle just kind of appeared right in front of me, and I, I rem remember just saying, wow. Um, so that was fun, and that stuck with me, obviously. Well, eventually I made it to my hotel, I had a great night's sleep, and I started my adventures in the morning. I headed north to Bellingham and then east into North Cascades National Park. These huge mountains, the just the vastness of it all, the likes of which I had never seen before. I mean, the tallest mountain in New England, ironically, is Mount Washington, um, and it's only around 6,300 feet high. Mount Baker, which I drove past that day, is about 11,000 feet high. And that's not even the tallest mountain in Washington. Mount Rainier to the south is over 14,000 feet high. So I wound my way through North Cascades National Park on these mountain passes with my jaw hanging open most of the time. Uh, I stopped so frequently to take photos that it probably took me twice as long to get through the park as it should have. I eventually came out of the mountains to the east and found myself in a little town called Twisp, where I got pulled over for speeding. I don't honestly even remember seeing the sign, but I think I was going 40 in a 25 zone. Oh, and I also remember that there were still gas stations there selling leaded gas for the people who still had these really old trucks. All in all, by the time I got back to my hotel, in Everett, I had been out for 14 hours. It was just an incredible day. Over the rest of the trip, I went to Mount Rainier. I went to the Ho Rainforest, which is out on the Olympic Peninsula. Um, I explored the city of Seattle a bit. Uh, I even went to a Seattle Mariners game at the Kingdom, which thankfully isn't there anymore. Oh, after having grown up going to games at Fenway Park, watching a game at the Seattle Kingdom was like watching a game in a tomb. And the Mariners really sucked that year. So the crowd was pretty sparse. They were they were giving away two-for-one tickets when I bought mine. Um, and one thing that's really funny that I remember was that even though there was barely anybody in the park, I think I had the whole row to myself. There was this couple, this like middle-aged couple behind me, and while they were talking, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Boston accents. So I turned around and started talking to them, and they were from Allington, Massachusetts. 
This whole park had hardly anybody in it, and these two are from Arlington. Over the last couple of days of the trip, I decided to drive um, southwest down to the Washington coast because I'd never seen the Pacific coast before. And finally, on my last full day, I visited the small town of Roslyn, Washington, which doubled as the fictional town of Sicily, Alaska on Northern Exposure. See, it all comes back around. It was so fun seeing it in person. This sign here in real life just says Roslyn Cafe because that's the name of the town. The apostrophe S was stuck on for the show. At some point, there was an episode which established the folklore that the town of Sicily had been founded by a female couple named Sicily and Rosalind. On the final evening of this trip, August 12th, 1992, I found a nice spot along the water of Puget Sound in West Seattle to watch the sunset behind the Olympic Mountains. Now, that was something I had never seen before. Now, I did fly home the next day, but not without some drama. Um, the night before my flight, I thought I had turned my alarm clock in the room on. As it happens, I turned it off uh, right before I went to bed. So I woke up in a panic less than an hour before my flight, 40 miles from the airport. Needless to say, I didn't make it. However, something very lucky happened. The flight had been overbooked. Um, so they had been asking people to voluntarily give up their seats in exchange for a $300 travel voucher. Well, when I went to rebook myself on another flight, Somehow my name had gotten mixed in with the people who had given up their seats voluntarily and I was given a $300 travel voucher as well. Um, I was still able to fly home later that day, so it all worked out pretty well.